So you've seen the insane text-to-video AI models coming out. OpenAI Sora was probably the best looking one yet, but not available to the public. Another next-gen model that made its appearance was called Kling, but you had to have a Chinese mobile number to use it. So I think a lot of us assume that we're not going to see the top-of-the-line AI video models anytime soon, at least ones that we can get our hands on, ones we can use. But Loom AI makes an appearance and it's good, really good. But most importantly, it's available to use now. Well, it looks like everyone on the planet is trying it out right now, so the demand is sky high. It took me, oh, about three hours to generate this one prompt. So expect to give it a day or two before we can start generating stuff on the fly. But let me show you some stuff it can do. Some of this stuff will be somewhat not safe for work, if you know what I mean. And the last one will be straight up scary, like, horror movie scary. It's called Tales from the Other Side. I'll leave that one for last in case you're watching this alone, at night, in the dark. Because I'm gonna say it now, AI generated horror flicks have the potential to be the scariest things we've ever seen. Here's another YouTube creator in the AI space. His channel is Theoretically Media, and he got early access to this. I'll leave a link to his video down below but he was able to do some image to video. So for example, creating an image in Midjourney and then animating that with Luma AI. And he was also able to create some scenes from his own prompts. So this I think is a really good non cherry picked example of what Luma AI can do. Here it is. If you ever played Hitman, this is your chance to recreate that as your very own movie. Very dynamic, very action packed. The second version from that same prompt, uh, you know, obviously per prompt, you get two generations, uh, yielded this as a result. And yes, while there is some decoherence and- So each time it generates two different ones. So I gotta say that first one is very, very good. I mean, the fingers right, the hands are a nightmare, but I mean, it does look like he's looking down the sights of the gun that he's shooting. In the prompt, they stated that the assassin should be bald, which it nailed. I gotta say, it's pretty good. There it is. He's shooting the gun, leaning around the corners. I love it. Next is Pirates of the Caribbean or something like it, right? So some sort of a adventure on a pirate ship. Really cool. And this is possibly one of my favorites. So this is uh, an image that he made. So he made a static image. Uh, I'm not sure if it was mid-journey, but taking that image and adding it into... Luma AI and the dream machine is what this thing is called. So Luma AI is the company. This is the dream machine. This is what it does. So as you can see here, it animates the movements. She's looking kind of keeping eyes on the camera. And one thing that's very interesting is that you're able to add certain prompts to make it, for example, for her to change positions. So here's one with her hands folded. That's what that looks like. So her folding her hands across her body Again, the arms and everything else looks insane and not very good, but I gotta say the fact that you can say what the position should be, what the movement should be, and that gets animated from a static image, that's pretty exciting, right? So I'll put the links down below so you can try this for yourself. And in a minute, I'll show you the best of Luma Labs, like the best generations that it can make. So you can see what it's capable of at if you're picking the best examples. So of course, as you're generating various examples, various samples, some of them will be good, some of them will be bad. So oftentimes picking the best shot will come down to generating a hundred shots with maybe slightly different prompts and then picking out the best ones. That's similar to how we oftentimes approach Midjourney and these other things like Magnific Upscaler, you do multiple variations with different parameters, different settings, different prompts to hopefully capture that perfect thing, which is not too dissimilar to how, for example, some photographers approach photo shoots, right? Sometimes if you've ever seen a professional photo shoot, the photographer will point the camera, hold down the button, you hear that rapid machine fire click, that super fast clicking of the camera as it's taking dozens and dozens of shots. And then afterwards, they go through it one by one, picking out the best ones. Some of the 
newest phone cameras also do the same thing, right? They take a little clip and you can pick out the best, the perfect sort of still moment within that shot. And the reason that's important to understand is because if you're trying to produce something that's like cinematic, something that's like movie quality, yeah, you might have to produce hundreds of shots, thousands perhaps, have some sort of a filtering process, maybe even do a little touch-ups here and there, but then once you put it together, the results can be stunning. So let's take a look at this and in a second, I'll show you what's possible if you're willing to go through and find the best shot. So Luma Labs, and this is their dream machine, which is an AI model that makes high quality, realistic videos fast from text and images. So currently it's taking, they say, 120 seconds to generate one clip. But right now there's a huge queue for how, there's a huge queue. So it's taking hours, but you can see when it's in queue. So before it starts processing. And they're saying that it's a highly scalable and efficient transformer model trained directly on videos, making capable of generating physically accurate, consistent and eventful shots. And it sounds like they will have more and more abilities to customize the thing that you're trying to capture. As this thing gets rolled out to more users, they're going to be adding these functionalities. And it sounds like there's a bit of a trade-off between how eventful a shot will be versus consistency versus how custom you want it to be. So if you want a long shot with very specific things in it, then it might approach a point where the character in the shot is not really doing anything, just standing still. Whereas if you let it be a little bit creative, it can go and generate something with a lot of action. So there's a little bit of a trade-off happening there. We talked about this so you can create high quality video from both text and images. So you can upload your favorite image and then have that be brought to life. So they're saying it's incredibly fast, 120 frames in 120 seconds. And here they're talking about consistent characters. And this is something that I did notice about the videos, the characters stay consistent dealing with some of the previous text to video models. Throughout the shot, the character can morph into something completely different. Here, whatever else you can say, I gotta say that they stay pretty consistent. There's still some glitches with the fingers and hands, but the character doesn't like fundamentally flip and turn into something completely different. They can also do a lot of the different camera movements, a zoom, pan, rotate, etc. That's going to be able to create a lot of really stunning cinematic shots and some like dramatic close-ups, etc. The fact that they can go from underwater to above water with this little bear here is uh pretty cool, I gotta say. And I gotta give them credit for doing this. So they spell out their current limitations, right? So they're saying, what are we bad at? What is this model currently, what doesn't it do pretty well? So morphing. So if a car has to morph into a different color or a different car, they're not doing that too well quite yet. Movement. So this dog gliding along the, the ground. So maybe if there's some sort of a background foreground type of thing, maybe it's not that good. Text is notoriously difficult to do for these both image models and video models. And then Janus, which I don't know what that is. I looked it up. Janus, it could be referring to a god with two faces. So some sort of a two-faced deity. So here, as you can see, here's a polar bear. Maybe the prompt was for it to have two front ends, two faces. And basically, I think what you got to think of is like what these models are trained on. So if they see tons of hours of footage of polar bears, they can reproduce a polar bear. How many hours of footage of two-headed polar bears are there in the wild? Probably not as many. But the big message here, I think, is that when Sora came out, there wasn't anything quite like it. We had Pika Labs, we had Runway ML. They were good, but they weren't still awe-inspiring. They were, they had that AI-generated look. So you could make some cool things with it. Some of the best stuff that I saw with it leaned more towards like mystical and horror because just how weird the video looked. Here, I think we're definitely at a point where a lot more things can be done. Do you want something that's a little bit more romantic? Do you want a cinematic shot? Do you want an action shot? Do you want like this, whatever this bear and swine things are over here, some sort of a leather clawed badasses that are walking away from an explosion? Like you want to do that? <laughs> you can do that. And now we saw this sort of next step in, in these AI video models, not just from Sora, which we couldn't get our hands on, although people in the Hollywood have been apparently have early access to it. And then we had Kling, which you had to have a Chinese mobile number to use. And now finally this, which now everyone can use. Now you're limited to a certain amount of generations. Here's the pricing, by the way. So you get 30 free generations per month. So each generation is two different shots, so two samples. And you can upgrade to have 120 generations at 30 per month, 400 at 100 bucks a month, and 2,000 generations if you're willing to shell out 500 per month. Which again, if you're using this to create some sort of features, movies, you're probably going to need that. But with that said, let me show you some of the best of things that people have created 
using this Luma Labs Dream Machine. If this was interesting, please make sure you're subscribed because we're going to be covering this in depth as soon as the traffic, the demand dies down a little bit and it's possible to generate these videos. We're going to be doing a deep dive and seeing what's possible with something like this. Seeing is it possible to create our very own movie or cartoon or anime of some sort. So stay tuned. Lots more things coming. Make sure you're subscribed and enjoy. At this point, life seemed to be a never-ending circle, again and again. I did the same routine, like that auto taxi that flies round and round, all changed when I met her, Yuki, the shrine keeper. She was trying to stop the robot sent to destroy the Tori. I felt the urge to help her and deactivated the bot. She thanked me and showed around the shrine's garden. I knew the corporation would send more bots, but at that moment, nothing else mattered. Only the shrine, only Yuki. Hey, my name is Abel, and let me tell you the story 
of fur. Thank you.